real quick. Let's change this for a wireframe so you can see that it's quite dense. Um, but what I want to show you here is that if I move out, you'll see that there's an object here with a hole in the middle and it basically uh, blocks the light. So you can see this pink light here. So if I turn on the EPR, this object with the hole in the middle is blocking the light. So I can move that object down. Let's just, I want to turn this one off. Um, so I can move that object down, zoom in, and it looks like that, or I can move that object up a little bit, uh, or even more up, or even more up. So you can see how that hole in the mesh basically uh, makes a mask. So uh, of course you can move that object around uh, in for example, the set direction as well, and it will basically create a new look. If you go to Modeler, you can pretty much see how that, what that mask looks like. Notice that it's. Um, a one-sided polygon so it's only visible from underneath. If you flip it in the wrong direction it's not going to work. You could turn on double-sided though to make sure that it works if you mess up but yeah. So that's the object blocking that light. Um, The terrain. It's, it's a freeze terrain, so these days I would have used a sub object instead. Uh, doesn't really make sense to have a freeze terrain. But uh, back then I, I had some problems with creating the displacement map in Lightwave, so. That's why I ended, ended up freezing it. Uh, so yeah, this was done in ZBrush, just uh, pretty much just sculpting it like, you know, like that. Just uh, and that took a damn long time. That took like one, I don't know, two days. I don't know, one day. I just remember it taking a damn long time. Uh, so yeah done by hand really uh, just sculpting that in ZBrush and I remember it was kind of like difficult at times because I would have to zoom in on that area and sculpt it and then for some reason it would also sculpt stuff here so it wasn't all that fun uh, but it worked um, The main object looks like this, and if if I had the, if I got that uh, displacement map to work, then this is what I would have had in layout with the displacement map on it. Um, I think I pretty much would have done the same thing today. Uh, I think also I would have, just for fun or just for the heck of it, just a test, I would have added cloth effects to some of the terrain, like some of the overhang uh, to make it more the terrain more dynamic. I would use try to use cloth effects uh, or bullet. Um, but yeah, so this is the original. Uh, you can see that. It's uh, the polygons are smaller here compared to here, 
and of course that is because when you look at it like this you really should try to have it appear as as if these polygons are as big as these guys so honestly this should have had more resolution I think um, maybe it, it depends on on the view but yeah it's a good idea to try to at least create these back polygons slightly larger than the ones in the front. Also you can see that I pretty much uh, removed this info here uh, because that's not going to be seen by the camera and here I removed it. So it just makes sense when you make a render like this. Is that it? I think that's it. Um, yeah, so that's how I created this scene. Gonna make it available for download. So not a great scene, but might be useful for this and that.